Hey foodies, how are you? It's your girl Brittany Noel and I am here at the Renaissance Pleasure Fair for my second weekend in a row. So excited because I had so much fun my first weekend. I just had to come back and try some more of the activities. So if you want to see an awesome jousting show, you want to see some more food, you want to see some strong women, then make sure that you go ahead and you stay tuned. Now if you're new to my page, hi, hello again, I'm Brittany Noel. I'm a certified personal trainer and a nutrition coach and I like to teach people all about fitting fitness into their lifestyle. So you're like, what the heck does that have to do with the Renaissance Fair? Well, as part of my lifestyle, I'm very much into what people would call like nerd culture. I love wizards and I love Disney and I love all things nerd, which includes things like Renaissance Fair. So this weekend's actually RenCon, so it's a great opportunity to see other people dressed up in awesome outfits and all of that. So I was really excited to come. And then again, I like to balance out fun activities like getting dressed up on the weekends with my fitness. And I like to take the opportunity to visit fairs and different uh, things and basically seeing how we can incorporate a fitness element into those things. So if that sounds awesome, make sure that you go ahead and you hit that subscribe button on my page and that alert bell so you don't miss out on anything else. So let's go ahead and walk around, see what we can see. This is truly a family event. There's so much to see. Look at all the amazing costumes. The man walking his pickle. It is so fun to be here during RenCon. I absolutely loved what this outfit was giving, yes girl. And then you can go shopping for your own outfit if you wish, so many talented vendors. You can do a gnome hunt for the kids, there's also this really fun kids kingdom. There were also opportunities to test your strength and your athleticism, so I decided to do these throwing stars. Any form of athleticism when it comes to throwing? I don't think so. Almost. Almost. Okay, I gotta go higher, higher. I can do this. This is for Naruto! Oh, that's too high. <laughs> that one's for Sasuke. Kakashi. I'm acting like, I'm acting like Sakura. This oh. one's for Sakura. I am Kakashi, dang it. Oh, that one actually hit. <laughs> there we go, we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh. Rossi Chuddington. <laughs> I can do this. Chuddington. Nice. Okay, guys. I got one rusting on in me. Rusting on! Oh, I failed ninja school! Next, it was time to see an actual strong woman supernova. I'm so strong I can't wear sleeves. Because I need a concealed weapons license for my biceps. <laughs> This is the part of the show where she started to show off her strength, and my goodness, so strong on top of being hilarious. And smoldering gazes and bulging biceps aren't enough. In order to defeat this, we're going Okay, so Supernova, the strong woman, has just finished her show. Such a good show. She's hilarious. She can sing, and most importantly, she's uber strong. Um, did you see? She 
she she squished up a frying pan. That's amazing. Um, I don't know how she did it other than being enormously, amazingly strong. But we also get the amazing opportunity to go ahead and interview her and ask her some questions. So let's go ahead and do that and get to know Supernova a bit better. All right, everyone. I'm super excited because I'm here with Supernova, the strong woman. Um, so hello. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Brittany. So they call me the Fit Queen or Magical Fit Brit because I'm all about fitting fitness into your lifestyle. So we would love to know how you fit fitness into your lifestyle. Obviously, you're very strong. So what are some things that you do in your day-to-day -day life? Um, well, for me, I guess as a professional circus artist, it's my job to train. So I have um, the ability to set aside large amounts of time to actually devote to fitness. That's awesome. So what got you into being a circus performer and got you into wanting to be super strong? Uh, I started in the martial arts. Ooh, yeah. what martial arts? I actually did Aikido, which is a defensive martial art. Nice, we love that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we want to learn. We haven't learned yet, but we want to. <laughs> oh, are you? Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of friends that have an MMA background, and then we're really big about, again, strength and women feeling empowered and so any of the yeah. defensive arts are really great both from a self-defense standpoint and just for teaching discipline we're all about being disciplined so i've heard a lot of great things about akita and wanted to try that out so that's awesome that you do that i, I hope you enjoy the yeah. process of learning yeah so how long have you been doing this um I, most of my life i've been doing some form of strength and and performance i started yeah again started in the martial arts and i saw a person do a handstand in a martial arts class oh, that's awesome. Um, um, and I asked them, where did you learn that? I thought it was really beautiful. Um, they told me there's a circus class that's seven blocks from this Aikido dojo. And so I checked it out, and the teacher of that class happened to be the former Austrian national sport acrobatics team that's awesome. coach and a former Olympian and trained me for the has trained me for about the past 17 years. Wow, that's an amazing opportunity. So yeah. you've learned like from the best. Yeah, it's um, definitely a huge, huge force for positivity and learning in my life. His name is Stefan first. Shout out to Stefan. Yeah, shout out, shout out. <laughs> We've been wanting to learn how to do a handstand forever. Haven't got there yet. We're good at wall stands. Yeah. It, it's mostly for me, I'm not... I'm a little bit of a scaredy cat sometimes. So I have a fear of falling, even though yeah. I've learned how to fall. So it's just not my favorite thing. Uh, but... I want to learn so bad. Can I um can I give some acknowledgement yes. to that? Yes, please do. I would love that. Yeah. So uh, that that fear is so natural and helpful because that's self-preservation. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I uh, the handstand. Yeah, it, it triggers that, and I think that response is a positive thing okay, in a lot great. of ways because it's it's there to protect you and keep you healthy. So if you're a person that feels fear about things like that, I encourage you to just honor that in yourself, and then slowly, if you're doing the wall the wall stand, for instance, do you mind if I do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you can do is try to get your feet up and then as you're comfortable you can walk your hands closer and closer yeah let's do it do a demo all right so here she goes this is how you're going to set up with those feet on the wall and then you can get closer and closer, and closer. yay you had <laughs> impressive most impressive That was so helpful because I was just going to ask you, like, what would you recommend for someone trying to get into this, trying to improve their strength? So that's a really great way to do that. Is there any other tip you have for people wanting to be strong women like yourself? Oh, yeah. I think, like um, Brittany was saying, Brittany's interested in Aikido. So finding that thing that is fun for you, that brings you joy along with the fitness. In Aikido, there's also often a community of people to practice with. And so if it ties you to a community that you enjoy, if the activity brings you joy, then there's so much more um, inspiration for consistency in your practice. Yeah, we always say that, right, you guys? We always talk about fitness that fits you, and so that fits in so well. So, oh, yes! I, I love that. I love that fitness that fits you. Yeah, we always talk about, you know, fitness should be fun. It should be something you're passionate about, something that you enjoy doing. So that goes so well. We appreciate that so much, Super Elva. Oh, I love that. <laughs> well, it was so nice to meet you, and I can't wait to see you at your next show. Yay! Thank you, Brittany. You're welcome. Have a great day. 
So after hanging out with Supernova, there was time to do a bit more exploring before the jousting happened. So there was some fencing going on, and then I got some food. This is a chimney cake, and it also came with a pickle, which is really good for helping you get more enzymes and stay hydrated during the fair. It was really good, and they even have vegan options if you want that. This is me chowing down. <laughs> it was it was good. And uh, now we're gonna want the queen approach. So this is the queen's guard, and what they do is they they basically walk in front of the queen as we wait for her to come, and then she is going to guide us into the jousting area. I would never say that to the real queen of the world. Okay, let's see God save the queen! God save the queen! All right, so we've arrived at the Queen's Joust, and look at this crowd. They are so into it. I can't wait to see the show. Shh, it's starting. Oh, welcome, my word. My beloved people, I pray be seated and take your ease. Now these knights before you, these are your ears. Let them have it. Dudley men on handsome horses, yes, hear, hear. I don't see Slytherin over there. Oh, I did. I did. I did. Now, on each of these teams, we've got two riders, a wargaming knight and a jousting combatant. For the moon and lion, your wargaming knight is Sir Eteron! Ravenclaw! Gryffindor! Go, go, Gryffindor! <laughs> oh, I guess he's a Larry. Like Larry the Gryffindor lion that we have in stream. Oh. <laughs> now for your jousting combatants. On the moon and lion. Oh, I told you there was a Slytherin. Now, for this to be a perfect run, you must absolutely impale this target. Impale it! Point and parade it up there, past the end of the toot rail. Army! We shall rise to the occasion! Yeah! Go, Larry, go, Larry, go. Go, Larry, go, Larry, go. 
Yup, Gryffindor! It's Edron and Copper, let's go! And oh, huzzah! It's a perfect two points! That's to two points to Ravenclaw, Mr. Gryffindor. Oh, three ring targets prepared for these gentlemen. Three rings in one that decrease in their size as they near the central target. The course is ready, and Edron, the field is Can he do it? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Edron, we'll get to talk to him later for a little bit. Mary, Mary, Mary. Oh, look at Adderall over here shaking his tail feathers. <laughs> oh, what would the queen say? There's only one way to set off such a tie as this. Wrestling! <laughs> I mean, I guess we could just. Wrestling sounded more interesting, but sure. Ow, the joust is the back. Slytherin is back in the house. So it looks like our Slytherin man here is going to be in charge of the jousting section. So he's getting all suited up. He's ready to go. Oh, blowing a kiss to the lady. We love it. Oh, he's Vincenzo. Hey, Vinny. All right, so our main man, Vincenzo, over here, he was just going in. It was just shield, boom, after shield, boom, like the champion. Elliot, Elliot. Is a child. <laughs> That's the horse. Oh. Oh. So, Vinny won like three rounds, and then this happened. Boom! <gasps> Finally, the other opponent got a point. So victory was his. I mean, still not as much victory as Vinny, but points to you. After that, there was this whole confrontation with the sword that I completely missed because it came out of nowhere. But um, yeah, this is them apologizing to the queen for their actions. So we'll see how this turns out. Quite often you shall play for the golden chain of Port Deptford. Shall not only gain the chain, but shall also be named the Queen's Champion. Oh. Start either of you in the negatives for the following tournament. Now let's return to this field at the hour of five and have ourselves a final championship. All right, so it looks like you have to come back later to see that final joust and who's going to get... Crown the Queen's Champion. To your people! 
right, so we just witnessed the most awesome jousting ever. So super pumped because we get to actually talk to one of the jousters and see what he feels uh, about his recent jousting competition and also ask him a few questions about what it's like to be a knight and a knight that jousts. So really excited for that. So let's have a very studly knight. Hello. Hello, my lady. My name is Sir Edron of Aquitaine. Wow. And I am the Queen's champion. Wow, he is. I just watched him joust. He was very good at it. Thank you. You're too kind. Yes. How long have you been jousting? I've been jousting for 17 years. Wow, that's a really long time. How do you stay in jousting shape? Well, you just get hit in the head a lot. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, it's a lot of training goes into jousting. We wear about 70 to 65 pounds of armor. Wow, that is a lot, so you're very strong. Yes, you know, the strength training, of course, to be strong enough to wield the armor, but also the endurance to be wearing 70 pounds and be able to fight for 30 to 45 minutes is very important. We love that. So how? what is your favorite strength exercise? Oh, my favorite, I would have to say anything to do with chest. Oh, I that's good. To chest. We love it. He's got very firm chest here, oh, as you can see. You. Thank you. And my legs, I'm always working on my legs. You never skip leg day. Never skip leg day. Don't we do. love that. <laughs> so if you have advice for people who want to become jousters when they grow up, what would you say? My best advice would be very good. Be very good at falling down and getting back up. Yes, we love that. <laughs> No, the horse work is the most important part. It's all about your horse. Your horse is your main teammate. And in jousting, there's no defense. You're wearing your defense. So it's all about offense. So your training needs to be very clear and deliberate so you know what you're doing going into it. Nice! And what is the name of your noble steed? My noble steed this day was named Copper. Absolutely studly and beautiful. I'm so proud of him right now. <laughs> <laughs> His presence is so ominous that like my hand is shaking. I'm like, he's so cool. Oh, I can't I'm shaking. I can't take it. <laughs> um, so anyways, another thing that we talk about is a lot about like how you fit fitness into your lifestyle and how to make fitness fit you. So what's something that you do that you're like, well obviously he jousts. That's what makes <laughs> fitness fit him. That's yes. how he stays in shape. That's yes. a pretty cool niche. <laughs> Jousting. I'm a firm believer that <laughs> if, it, if you work out and it's hard today, it, everything's going to be easier tomorrow. Or if you skip it now and you take the easy route now, everything's going to be hard later. So I'm a very firm believer in putting in the work because it always comes back to you. So. Love that! Well, thank you so much for your time. Oh, we love it so you. much. And hopefully we'll get to see him in the final joust oh, yes. later to see if he continues to be the Queen's champion. Yes, hopefully I won't die. Yeah, we don't want that! It's a lot yeah. of pressure. A lot of pressure. You'll, you'll do great. <laughs> oh, thank you. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have another one of these amazing performers with us. Hi. How, how are you? I'm great. I love it here. Having yes. a great time. Uh, we're super excited to see your show. We heard that you're very strong, very womanly and awesome. So Thank tell you. us more about yourself and what you do. Absolutely. My name is Leo Orleans. I go by Star Power. Woo! And I do the Tiny Girl Big Show. It's a one-woman comedy acrobatic stunt show. We love stunts and acrobatics. Yeah. We wish that I could be more acrobatic, but I live vicariously through awesome ladies like yourself. <laughs> so tell me how you like to train for your show. Yeah, so I do a lot of body weight workouts. Ooh. I do a lot of calisthenics. I've trained in circus since I was 12 years old. So I do a lot of handstands and core work. A lot of what I do is all about endurance because I need to be able to do a 45 minute show four times a day. That's so a yeah, it's a whole lot. So when I do a training day, I'll often train in the morning, like take a break and then do another training day or another training session later that afternoon or that evening. So getting multiple sessions in on one day helps me be able to do a whole fair day like this. Awesome. Um, what do you eat to train for all that? <laughs> a lot of protein. I'm diabetic, so I have a very strict regimen of when and what I can eat based on my glucose levels and my insulin levels. Um, but it's a lot of protein, a lot of carbs, a lot of fast digesting carbs, a lot of food that can quickly turn into fuel. Okay. Yeah. So on my channel, we're all about fitness that fits you, finding ways to fit fitness into your lifestyle. So I think finding unique ways to be fit, like what you're doing is awesome. So tell them a little bit more about what got you into this, what inspired you and all of that. Absolutely. I started doing circus when I was 12 years old. Yeah. I went to gymnastics, but I really didn't like competing. Competing stressed me out. So I steered away from competitions and towards the arts and towards theater and circus. And then I got into super hot yoga. I was a yoga teacher for a bit, and then that really helped me learn how to train, and I also do fitness training, so it's like a big part of my world. Um, and then from that, I was able to take my skills and wrap them into a show and start touring. So. 
That is amazing. Yeah, I always used to look at gymnasts, and I'm a huge Olympics fan, so I would look at the Olympics. Remember Dominique Dawes, like way back when? Yes. I was like, I want to be a part of this, and my mom would never take me to gymnastics class. <laughs> Boy, I love that you got to do that. I'm so in love with the whole world. So I can't wait to watch your show and rock this big show with this tiny girl. Thank you. I hope you're having a fun day at this crazy fair. Yes, it's so much fun. It was so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Brittany. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so here she is with her baggage, tiny girl big show. Let's go ahead and watch it and be prepared to laugh and be amazed. Mystical beings of all identities and heights. <laughs> Welcome to the original Renaissance Pleasure Fair. My name is Star. If you forget my name, it's written on my butt. <laughs> And pose. I'm gonna crack this whip. When I crack this whip, I need everybody to shout, Oh yeah! Can you do it? I would have whipped myself in the behind by now. <laughs> the talent. Oh, we're not done. Oh, she's still going. She's gone. How? Oh my gosh. I just, my pelvic floor could be. <laughs> oh, you know? Go girl, go girl, go, 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 go. Oh my god, I need to renovate my pelvic floor. <laughs> the top of my head while spinning in a circle on the unicycle of its stability. <laughs> this trick is dangerous and here is why. If I mess up, the whip will wrap around my neck and then snap me in the eyeball, both choking me and blinding me without my consent. <laughs> you see, I love that joke because I can immediately tell which one of them would be my friends. <laughs> Over 
shared with these guys. I just told like 300 strangers sitting in the Santa Fe Dam recreational facility dressed as anime characters that I can't reference about my body hair. These are my three clubs, and they have names, you see. I named them myself. One is named Work. One is named Life. One is named Relationships. <laughs> So even though her show is filled with innuendo, it goes right over the kids' heads, so still family-friendly. And I encourage you to see her shows to see this amazing final act. Now, after her show, went ahead and walked around at the fair a little bit more. Look at the amazing shops you can go shopping at, the costumes, amazing. And, of course, you want to make sure that you catch up these other shows like this one. Since I visited Scotland, I was really excited to see this performance. I think that Celtic dancing is so much fun, and he is well. And it's still Rincon, so there's still amazing costumes to see and performers, and you have to check out this honey shop. It's so good. Okay, so we got the honey, because these ladies are witches. They make honey taste delicious. I tasted the mango one, and it tasted like mango sorbet. And then they gave me lemon, and it tasted like lemon amazingness. So make sure you get the honeys. Look. The honey, they, they've worked their magic. They also accept both cash and muggle credit card. It's great. All right, so that's all I have for you today. I hope that you had a blast experiencing Renaissance Fair with me. I hope that you decide to come and visit it yourself. This is the one in Irwindale, but they have some in many different locations. So make sure that you go ahead and you visit your local Renaissance Fair. And of course, if you want to see me at one and hang out here, this is the one again, Irwindale, which is kind of close to Los Angeles. So make sure that you go ahead and do that. Also, please let me know down in the comments who your favorite performer was. If you want their information, I'll put it in the description of where you can find these amazing performers because I would love for you to be able to support them. And of course, if you haven't yet, make sure again, you go ahead and you hit that subscribe button and you like this video. So that way you don't miss out on any of our other adventures. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and head out. I had a blast with you guys today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.